like to welcome our next speaker. And this next speaker, a lot of you may know, because this speaker is a councillor of the people, for the people. Sue Bolton, please, a round of applause. Yeah. Sue Bolton is a three-time elected member councillor and a member of the Socialist Alliance and initiated the pro-Palestine motion at the Marybeck Council in November last year. I have personally gotten to know Sue over the last six months and I can tell you with my hand on my heart, Sue is one of the most staunch women I have ever had the pleasure of meeting. Please a round of applause for Sue Bolton. because I feel in my bones that we're seeing the beginning of the end of the occupation of Palestine. Yeah. From all the local areas that are going into the city, organising actions in their local areas, organising actions in their workplaces, organising civil disobedience, because that's all part of it. And many of these people were never political before in their lives. And they've, so, they've been so moved by what's been happening in Gaza that they have decided to do something. And that's the power of people. I'd also like to recognise the rightful owners of the land we're standing on, which was stolen. It was never given away. It was stolen on the backs of a horrific genocide. The right owners of this area are the Wurundjeri Wurrung. And it's been fantastic to see the alliance between First Nations and Palestinians. That's been a wonderful alliance. And just listening to Albanese, not that we'd expect anything different, his condemnation of Iran today for the drone attack, um, castigating them for breaking international law, war crimes and so on and so forth. He's never used that same sort of language against Israel. And all of the other crimes the whole crime they've been carrying out. The <laughs> One thing that we can't expect Israel to implement any of the UN decisions around ceasefires or the ICJ decisions. The UN doesn't have an army. Israel is going to thumb their nose at any kind of international condemnation until the arms are switched off. Because the US could end the genocide tomorrow if they switched off the arms. Shame! So that's why our movement, our movement has to keep going until victory. We can't tire out because people in Palestine, they're exhausted but they're fighting on. And we can't tire out. We have to keep going. We can't get demoralised. We have to keep on fighting until we force all of the politicians to act, to end the arms shipments and stop private organisations or universities and whatever, whatever organisation you might work for or have a connection with. We've got to force all of these organisations to end any kind of alliance with Israel. Military, diplomatic, economic, <laughs> what, the, what Israel is doing, I mean, they keep talking about Israel's indiscriminate bombing. I heard a Palestinian activist, Sasha, talk about Israel as carrying out discriminate bombing. And I think he's right because there's nothing indiscriminate about what Israel's doing. They're targeting civilians. Shame. It's not indiscriminate, it is deliberate. 
I mean, starting with the switching off of A, the siege, the full total siege. The previous blockade was disastrous. The siege, it's clearly about targeting civilians, starving people to death. The bombing campaigns, the snipers, snipers picking people off as, as they've been leaving Al Shifa Hospital and other hospitals and other, other areas. It's totally deliberate. Every single university, the paramedics, the hospital system, the civilian housing, everything is deliberate. They're trying to wipe out the Palestinian people and that's why we can't rest. And the attacks on West Bank are also trying to drive out Palestinians as well through the constant attacks on villages there as well. So we can't forget they're attacking, attacking every part of Palestinian society. Shame! Israel, shame! That's right, Israel, shame. shame. And shame. I think it is good that Hamas is standing up for a full permanent ceasefire. A full withdrawal of Israeli troops from all of Gaza. in aid and the rest uh, reconstruction of Gaza Yay! and allowing Gazan people to be able to return to what remains of their homes Yay! and their areas. Yay! We have to support those demands as being the very basic bedrock demands. It's a totally reasonable for them to do that. We don't want brief little humanitarian pauses. We want full permanent ceasefire and all of those demands that Hamas is putting forward being implemented in order to relieve the pressure on people in Gaza. Yeah. And why are the Western leaders of the most powerful countries, they are like companies, like private corporations, why are they refusing to condemn Israel and why are they continuing to arm Israel? I think that is where it's all about capitalism and economic interests in the Middle East. Israel is their police agent in the Middle East in the same way that white South Africa was their police agent in Southern Africa. Why they're backing Israel to the hill. They know if there was a popular democratic revolution across the Middle East, the corrupt leaders would fall and the wealth would be redistributed and the Western corporations would lose. That's why they're doing what they're doing. So we have to support with every fibre of our bodies the victory for the end to the occupation. And for the first time, we're seeing some journalists within Israel saying that they've lost the war. That Yay! Israel has lost the war. It's only a smaller publication, but they're saying they're saying that Israel has to recognise they've lost the war. And uh, Israeli um, intellectual, anti-Zionist Jew, is saying that he thinks the 7th of October was the beginning to, of the end of Zionism and beginning to the end of the occupation. before the world's people. And the world's people, especially people in Global South countries, they can see the double standards when it took an international group of aid workers to be killed by Israel before the world was prepared to recognise that Israel was deliberately targeting aid workers. So we've got to keep going. And I really hope that the campaign successful in winning a boycott, divestment and sanctions motion at the Hume Council um, and also keeping the pressure on the Council to look for ways to close down this weapons factory. But meanwhile, the people will try and cl will close down this weapons factory. So, it's the people who will be decisive. The 
politicians and councillors follow after the people. The people are the most decisive part of this. Us coming together as in the chant of the people united will never be defeated. The people united will never be defeated. The people united.